Looking at Gene Wilder, it might seem he was a show-off. The snozberries taste like snozberries. In a lot of ways, he was. He could sing and dance. Top, top, that's the dance for me and you. He was a great actor. Is the grizzly reaper mowing? Yes! And he was hilariously funny. I'm gonna tear them apart! What if they have guns, Eugene? Listen, we better get the police and let them handle this. You can see these all come together at this moment in Young Frankenstein. Hit it! If you're blue and you don't know... Wilder does all the work here. He's singing, he's dancing, he mugs, he grimaces. He co-wrote this movie with Mel Brooks, garnering the two an Oscar nomination. But he gives the big laughs where to the monster. Go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Wilder's comedy wasn't about hogging center stage. It was about finding a way to share it. In another highlight of his career, the producers, his fever pitch is... Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Pretty wild. I want... I want everything I've ever seen in the movies! That's all because he's signing on to co-star Zero Mostel's plan. Leo, say you'll join me! I'll do it! He'd even share the screen with a sheep. I don't think I've ever known such peace and happiness in my life. I hope you feel the same way. <laughs> Once Wilder was an established comedic talent in the early 70s, he could be the box office insurance that would let studios take a chance on a comedian who hadn't yet proved himself as a film star. That was definitely the case with Richard Pryor. The two first paired on Silver Streak, but watch how ably they trade off the role of the comedic lead in 1980's Stir Crazy. First Wilder freaks out, Long and Pryor covers for him. Then they completely switch. <laughs> Even in Wilder's most over-the-top role, he was sharing the screen. He's not exactly sharing the screen in the same way I talked about earlier. He dominates every scene he's in, to the degree where the book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, had the name and its title swapped out for Wonka's. What's interesting, though, is that he doesn't show up until 45 minutes into this film. Yes, he takes over the movie after his grand entrance outside the factory, but the power of his character comes from his role as an antagonist. The guy little Charlie has to outlast and outwit to ultimately win the prize of a gigantic chocolate factory. There it goes. Compare this with, say, Johnny Depp's turn in the role in the 2005 retelling of the story. This isn't just an ordinary up and down elevator, by the way. This elevator can go sideways, long ways, slant ways, and any other ways you can think of. Depp becomes the hero. No son of mine is going to be a chocolate. And the kids fade into the background a little bit as a result. Just press a button and sing! You're off. Not so with Wilder's Wonka. And up until now, I've pressed them all. Except one. This one. Go ahead, Charlie. Wilder didn't write or direct that film, and he sat out almost the first half. It takes a certain kind of talent to still dominate people's imaginations afterward. Come with me. And oh, did he. And you'll be in a world of pure imagination.